Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you guys are all doing really well. Today we're gonna to be doing a sequel to a video that I did, I think about a year ago now, which is on the male poetry community, which if you need a bit of a refresher, was a bit of a doozy. And her pubes, um, we were so close to having a normal fucking poem in here. This close. Since then, you'd probably think, or at least hope that male writing has gotten a bit better, especially in the department of men writing about women or that at the very least we've seen the worst of it. Like there can't possibly be shit on the internet worse than this. But you'd be so wrong, <laughs> so wrong. And since you guys love suggesting video ideas that typically involve me subjecting myself to some sort of psychological pain, I thought what better way to do that than to just dive right back into the male writing community because I'm curious and apparently a masochist. So if you did catch that video last year, you probably remember that in terms of male writing, we kind of just stuck to looking at male poetry. So I thought that this time around, we could kind of spread our wings, broaden our horizons, and just look at male writing beyond just poetry and look at some books. The reason that I wanted to do this was not just because I did a video already on the poetry section, but also because I'm super curious on if what we saw in male poetry was a product of the genre and just the fact that poetry can tend to attract pretentious people. I'm not saying that every poet is pretentious. I'm just saying that genre, as I'm sure we all know, regardless of who's writing, can tend to produce some very weird poems for some reason. So essentially, I'm wondering if it's a male poetry thing or a male writing thing. Do you wanna slide a quick disclaimer in here really quickly? We know not all men. We know not all male writers. At least just let us have a laugh over men writing about our boobs as if they have a separate conscious. Just give us that. All right, now that that's out of the way, I just wanna give a quick shout out to a Reddit thread where I compiled most of the material that we're gonna be looking at today, which is called r slash men writing women. If you've watched my last three videos, you probably have picked up on the fact that I have a very interesting growing obsession with Reddit. We're gonna ignore that for the time being. This first one actually comes from a book that was written back in the 60s. The book is apparently called The War with the Fnules. Do I wanna ask what a fnool is? Like, do I wanna know? Good for you, Major Hawk Miss Smith said, a little uneasily. But are you just going to leave me here to become a captain of the fnools? I mean, her sharply pointed breasts quivered in, becoming unison under her blouse. It seems sort of mean. The way this is written, I'm picturing her boobs like suddenly becoming super pointy as if they were like called to attention and they realized what was going on and now they're just shaking in their boots because they're fucking terrified. Oh, oh my God, what are we gonna do? Do I look like I know? Can you imagine this shit actually happened? Like our boobs were some sort of mood ring that just mimicked our emotions? How do you manage to write a book that's called The War with the Fnools? And the fnools part is the least weird thing about it. This girl has a nugget couch for boobs and we're supposed to just read this like it's normal. I noticed while I was collecting a lot of these photos for the video that there seems to be this obsession with boobs and nipples. Are we surprised? No, 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 not really. <clears throat> Her face in a ring of shiny hair, the freckled button of a nose, the upswept breasts with the chiseled nipples pointing at you, tracking you like the eyes of a Rembrandt. Chiseled nipples, everybody. They're chiseled, somehow. Why am I picturing handsome Squidward? <laughs> Can someone please explain to me what a chiseled nipple is? Actually, no, no, not what it is. What does it look like? You know what, now that I'm thinking of all the beauty videos that I've seen and the weird butt and boob masks that have kind of become a trend, I don't think we as a society are far off from beginning to contour our nipples. Maybe one day we'll all have chiseled nipples of our own that apparently also have eyes to keep an eye out for something. Also, before anyone says that I'm over-exaggerating about the potential chaos that the beauty community holds, allow me to remind you that a girl used her boyfriend's ball sack as a beauty blender. There are definitely wilder things that have actually happened in the beauty community than the looming threat of chiseled nipples. Never forget that. I also really hate that I initially read this sentence as the perfect slut, but also, can you blame me? Five words in, this man is talking about upswept breasts and chiseled nipples. Calling her a slut is probably the least offensive thing he could have thrown in at this point. Then again, scut could just be an early iteration of slut. Oh no, it actually means short tail. Wait, that's worse. The mattress stirred. 
He heard the strike of her match, felt the heat, and the tidal pull of her lips. She was naked, and the urgency of smoking didn't disturb her breasts, which were hard and still. Like turtles. Like turtles. Do men just look at everything in the world as a comparison to boobs? Like, is this how you people live? Also, what is this lack of disruption that's mentioned in the boob area because she's urgently wanting to smoke? They're boobs, not a waterbed. They're not constantly moving around like contained slime. The way that this guy is writing about it, I'm pretty sure he thinks that boobs are made out of that shit that we made in like grade four science class where it was kind of like kinetic sand and when you were holding it, it was stiff. But if you let go of it, it turned to liquid. Like, yeah, women are just walking around day to day like, oh no, I hope they don't fall. Before we continue though, it's ad time. I did want to give a quick shout out to Function of Beauty who sponsored today's video. I've been using their customizable shampoo, conditioner, basically all of their hair care for about a year now. And I thought with February coming up, it would be fun to customize my shampoo colors to be a bit more festive and fun. Naturally, I have straight, fine and oily hair, but I noticed in the winter months here in Canada because it's so dry and windy that my hair starts to look like straw and my scalp can really dry out quite easily. So this time around for my formula, I ended up going with goals like anti frizz, fix split ends, oil control, shine, and soothe the scalp. Color-wise, as I mentioned before, I wanted to do something festive in the spirit of Valentine's Day, so I ended up going with red and pink, which I thought ended up turning out pretty cute. And then scent-wise, ended up going with cherry blossom, which is a scent I hadn't tried before, and as somebody who is a really big fan of florals, this is such a nice smell, like it's just right up my alley. And of course, I put sweaty on the bottle because Who's gonna stop me? I also got a refill of their hair mask, which I've been using for about a year as well. And I like to use this whenever I'm having like a self care day or I'm just going the extra mile with that kind of stuff because it just makes my hair so ridiculously soft after using it. And I really like that. Since I've started using their products, I've noticed that my hair looks and feels a lot healthier, but during this past winter especially, my hair just feels more hydrated and just happy. Like I don't deal with a flaky scalp or my hair feeling like straw anymore or any of that kind of business where it feels like my hair is borderline angry at me. There's a lot of great stuff about Function and Beauty like the fact that they're vegan and cruelty free and that their formula has no parabens, sulfates, toxins, or GMOs in it. But I think my favorite part about it is the fact that I get to customize my formula whenever I want. Being able to just change your formula depending on outside factors that affect your hair is honestly so helpful and it's really helped my hair out as the seasons have been changing because I've just been able to tailor my formula depending on how my hair is reacting. And I can't lie, I do also really enjoy the fact that I get to change my silly little shampoo and conditioner colors and that I get to put sweaty on the bottle. If you wanna give Function Beauty a try, you can actually get 20% off of your first set by clicking the link in my description box below. Thanks again to Function Beauty for sponsoring. Now let's get back to the video. This next one though actually might be my personal favorite. It's very short, but it's very impactful. You may fascinate a woman by giving her a piece of cheese. First of all, rattly we ghostwriter tease. In terms of the actual statement, I see nothing wrong with this. There is no lie detected. Every girl likes cheese. Unless she has IBS or like a dairy sensitivity, which in that case she definitely wants cheese. She strutted into my office wearing a dress that clung to her like saran wrap to a sloppily butchered pork knuckle. Bone and sinew jutting and lurching asymmetrically beneath its folds. The tightness exaggerating the granularity of the suet and causing what little palatable meat there was to sweat. Its transparency, the thief of imagination. This is actually definitely a personal favorite as well. Mainly because I had to read this three times to understand what the hell this guy was saying. But the idea that he had sloppily butchered pork knuckle on deck as a comparison is kind of concerning. Maybe it's just me, but I do not trust anybody who looks at someone and then breaks out into a seven line song and dance about how they look like they're leftover dinner. I also will admit that I don't know what sweat means. I thought it meant sweat, but then he used that later on. And considering the context, I'm kind of afraid to Google it. But I think my biggest question is why would you compare her if you're trying to say that she looks good to a piece of sloppy meat that's been wrapped in saran. Why would you do that? Actually, better question, who edited this and let you do that? Army Hammer? When she stopped crying, Madeline composed herself before the mirror. Her skin looked blotchy. Her breasts, of which she was normally proud, had withdrawn into themselves, as if depressed. Madeline knew that this self-appraisal might not be accurate. 
I know that some of you guys are going to be mad about the whole boob deflate gate going on here because what the fuck? But mentally, I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of feeling like Madeline's sad, withdrawn, depressed breasts right now. Like emotionally, I feel a bit seen right now. Like a plastic bag, except it's just a sad, deflated boob floating around. 10 out of 10. Her mother laughed, showing her crooked teeth, stained where they overlapped. Well, now you can go to the beach all by yourself whenever you want. Show off that body of yours. Edith darted out a hand towards her daughter's breasts, probably thinking about twisting one of them, but Alice jumped back out of her reach. I would say that this is the last boob one that we're gonna cover, but it honestly isn't. The range that men seem to have when it comes to writing about boobs has got to be one of the most surprisingly expansive things I've ever witnessed. Like you would think that there's only so many ways that you can write about boobs before you start to realize that you sound a little bit ridiculous, but apparently we're still here with our girl Edith now, who's apparently darting out a hand towards her daughter's breasts, probably thinking about twisting one of them. Like a bop it. I guess. We do actually have a clip from a book that is kind of giving the she's not like other girls kind of energy if you were looking for a bit of a break from the boob content, which I'm sure my parents, who are currently downstairs as I'm recording this, were definitely hoping for. They're boobs, not a waterbed. They're not constantly moving around like contained slime. No. She moved the way most girls did. A few years before, when we had all gone back to school after summer holiday, it was like every girl had been invaded by a body snatcher. They looked the same, but they moved differently. None of them would play anymore. They'd stand at the side of the yard, rolling their eyes at everything that happened around them. In lessons, they'd sit upright where they always used to slouch and press their chests up like they were offering them to the gods. Amber didn't seem to be aware that she had a body. I'm just picturing these other girls in question, like walking around like those GTA girls do, but instead of in that game, they're doing it in a kid's play yard. But it's this bit especially. What does this even mean? Like God is probably the last guy to want someone's boobs. Hey ladies, wanna lift your shirt for your Lord and savior? Speaking of God, actually, apparently Jesus's mom doesn't even get to escape the grasp of the male writing gaze because apparently the future mother of Jesus was being described as being robust and sturdy with plump little breasts and strong brown hands callous from work. A self-written young peasant girl was being described as having plump little breasts in the exact same sentence. Not to mention this one that also talks about a girl's high breasts having childish nipples. Absolutely nothing to see here, folks. Totally fine. Everything about this is perfectly normal. This next one that actually comes from Stephen King is just so special. Come on, don't be like that, he says. I was just wondering how your ass is. You always had such a tight one. Must make it hard to take a shit. Where are my constipated cuties at? Must be hard to take a shit because your ass is so tight, right? Not because you're lactose intolerant, but still made that feta cheese passive from TikTok. Apart from the very obvious track record of male writers over-sexualizing women, or alternatively giving their boobs full autonomy and a mind of their own, there is also a track record of them dying for the weirdest reasons. A writer named David Ortberg actually compiled a list of the weirdest ways that he's seen women die in books, and I thought that it would be nice to share. And if you're wondering, am I gonna go through every single one of these? Yeah, I am. I don't wanna leave any stones unturned or boobs untwisted. We've got cold hands, beautiful face, missing slippers, wrist fevers, night brain, hate when that happens, shawl insufficiency, too many pillows, garden trouble, someone saying no very loudly while they were in the room, letter reading fits, drawing room anguish, not enough pillows, haven't seen the sea in a long time, too many pony exhaustion, strolling can sherry serve too cold, clergy man's dropsy, knitting needles are too heavy, the dreaded oomph, beautiful chestnut hair. You know what? I'm actually not gonna lie, these two in conjunction with each other actually do feel kind of tangible. Like as someone with back pain and a pride problem, I do see myself eventually dying from it all. Overall though, this basically just reads like a bad Pepto-Bismol commercial. Now that I'm thinking about it really hard, it might actually 
drive me to die. Before we end it off though, it wouldn't feel right to not include at least one piece of writing that incorporated a woman having her period because of course as women, all we do is have boob, get period, and lie. Now Lucy stood in the driveway in a sleeveless blouse and her faded jeans. She looked slim and desirable, but her brow was furrowed as if she had one of her premenstrual migraines coming on. You know, I actually do feel one of those migraines coming on. Totally different reason though. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. In a weird way, this is kind of fun. I've learned a lot about the apparent potential that my boobs have if they ever decide to wake up one day and live a life of their own. I'm very excited about my future partners in crime. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. You can also be notified every single time that I upload. That way you don't miss any videos by clicking the notification bell and then setting it to all. You can also find me outside of YouTube on Twitch, which the URL will be down below in the pinned comment. And then you can also find me on Instagram and Twitter, which are both at Casey Ayonzo. I completely forgot to mention this in the video, but we're actually streaming the last episode of Life is Strange tomorrow on Twitch. We're gonna be doing it at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and if you wanna check it out, my Twitch page is gonna be linked in the pinned comment down below. Hopefully you guys can make it, and hopefully I don't die. And yeah, that's about it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video again, and thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.